All right. So now we have the actual next workshop stuff. Um, so we've walked through all of the lovely server stuff now, and we've kind of just kind of been pushing it off as long as we can, but um, we can't really push it back any further. We need to actually make our API endpoints. Um, we've had server crashes, we've had everything. So we might as well just get this done and make things for ourselves. Um, so before we kind of jump into actually doing it, I kind of wanted to clarify a couple of things. Um, so we'll, huh? Oh. Okay, I'll just hide this somewhere. I couldn't read controls. All right, uh, I'm blind. All right, so, um, uh, you'll see here in a second, there will be router, but this is router for backend. Um, so as you might have noticed, uh, server is already getting a little bit long, but technically it doesn't do anything particularly functional in terms of API stuff. Um, and so uh, there's just a short clarification on the difference between app and router. App will be your overall um, web application through um, Express and router will focus on your API. Uh, that probably won't mean anything to you for a minute, but also this did appear in the questions back a second ago. Um, but uh, endpoints are anything that has a request and response defined for it, um, uh, while routes will have the specific paths uh, for our purposes, we'll probably use them interchangeably, but technically they are defined to be different things. Um, but getting into the actual workshop stuff now. Uh, so, so far we only have one singular endpoint uh, test. It's kind of boring. It only just returns to us a uh, lovely string. It's not dynamic at all. And we don't like non-dynamic things. So, um, we're not gonna dilly-dally around. We're just gonna jump right into it. So one thing we can do first, um, we can go to our lovely terminal and we can do um, get reset dash dash hard. We can make sure to fetch any changes just in case something has changed. Oh, look, some random stuff changed in other workshops. Um, and then we can do get checkout w5 dash started. So after those three lovely things are done, we can jump into the actual workshop content. So to start doing our workshop stuff, we will be working out of api.js in our server folder. It should be a new file now that you've checked out to things. Um, and so in this api.js, uh, we'll start by actually making that router object I talked about a second ago. So if we ignore this and we go to api.js, we can define, I can make this a bit bigger because I realize that's probably minuscule. Everybody see that's fine? No complaints, I'm taking that as a go. Um, so we can uh, make this um, router object real quick, um, which is provided to us by Express. It's much, it's, it's very similar in the way to how the front end router works in such that it does different functions based on the path, except this time it works uh, based on the path of back end stuff instead of path of front end object. All right, so now that we have our router made for our API, um, we want to be able to use it in other files. Um, so uh, how we'll export things in backend land here, we will add a line that says module exports is equal to router. Pretty straightforward. Um, and so, now we have uh, an API object that is 
usable in other files. So how about we actually get our server to actually use this file? So uh, what we can do now that it's exported, I'm going to save this and I'm going to jump on over into our server. So here we already have some imports. Uh, we have some path and express imports. So it makes sense just to write below this. Also um, do an import for the API file that is right next to this file. So in the same folder, we're gonna grab api.js. Everybody on the same page. And so this will import um, api.js into server. And so in order to tell our server to pass relevant requests to the API, we have to throw in a little bit of middleware. That's maybe a term not quite too comfortable in your brains yet, but it will be in due time. Um, so we can throw, let's throw it um, below here, um, grouping up things. Um, so this will tell it to throw all requests that go through slash API to this API object. And we can save that. So we already have one API route that exists in server, but in order to keep separation of our server functions and our API functions, I'm going to move this uh, API route from server over into API. So to do that, um, so here we have app.get. Um, we're going to first, um, I'm going to cut that out and I will paste it before the export. Um, but it won't quite work just like that just yet. So there's a couple important differences we have to make. I mentioned differences between app and router. You don't truly have to understand how they work, but we're going to replace the word app with the word router. And because on line 36 there in the screenshot, we're already passing uh, all API, uh, all slash API routes to this API object. We don't have to prepend the slash API onto that route. We can just use slash path. And that is all the changes we have to make in order to get the previous test endpoint um, to work in our, its own separate file. Um, so to, to, to prove that it kind of works in its own separate file, we can, we can differentiate it like so. And so if I now go and I do npm run start in a terminal window, and then I in Chrome, um, we're going to hide you again. Let's do local host 3000 slash API slash test. And voila, Noah can mildly live code just a little bit. Um, and so we have this object that was returned to us by our server running in our terminal window. So we can stop that and we can get back to more useful API endpoints. So um, to get back on the same page, if you haven't quite caught up, we can do git reset dash dash hard, git fetch again, just in case, you never know. Fortunately, nothing really changed here. And then we can do git check out w5 dash step one. And so with that, um, we should all be back on the same page to continue rolling. So now we get to actually define the routes that will provide us data in Catbook. Um, 
So we're going to start out with the basic ones. Let's get the, well, first um, we have to figure out where our data is going to come from. And we don't exactly know what databases are just yet. Um, but so in the meantime, um, we're just going to make an object to store our data for us um, because that will just make our life a lot easier. Um, so I think to make my life easier, what I will do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to check out to a step ahead of time and copy and paste. Uh -huh. If I can scroll the right amount, that would be great. I could just, you know, use the mouse on the desk next to me, but that's hard. All right. All right, so uh, as I pointed out a moment ago, we are going to steal this, these two things real here, right quick. Uh, we're gonna have this um, data object that stores our stuff for us. So as we know, we have currently two types of data within Catbook. Uh, we have stories and we have comments. So this is a standard JavaScript object notation, a JSON object that holds within it an array of stories with IDs, creator names, and content, and an array of comments with their own IDs um, and parent IDs, their creator names, and their contents. And so because I chose the name Hacker Man, of course, I've had to throw in a Hacker Man meme that I probably should have replaced because it's an old meme now. Um, but so to explain a little more um, on the terminology used here in API land. Um, so you might have noticed that we've kind of just been willy nilly throwing in these um, parameters here before our function handlers, um, as Mukara talked about. Um, so as you might probably guess, rec stands for request and res stands for response. Um, and these are the parameters that we will utilize to access uh, information about our incoming request and how we also, as we see here, send back the response. Um, and so they have some common properties that you will use about them. So as I talked about in the APIs lecture, was that two days ago already? Hold, no, that was just yesterday. Time blurs together. Um, so um, uh, we have access to all the variables within the query and we have, if it's a post request or anything that passes data into the request body, we also have access to all data within the request body itself. Um, and a uh, response, uh, we can change a few of its properties. Uh, so we can send back a object. Um, so we've been sending back a JavaScript object with just one single uh, property uh, message that's a string. Um, but additionally, we can also specify what we want our status code to be. We can tell them that we succeeded, everything's all good. We can tell them that you screwed up and you should try again or we can tell them that we screwed up and anywhere in between. So um, with the terminology stuff out of the way, we can actually get back to making endpoints. I know you're just dying to type a little more today. Um, so the first thing we can do is we can make a get endpoint for our stories. Um, so, it helps before you just start coding to break down a little bit what each API endpoint is supposed to do. Um, so before we jump right into it, um, we, as you might obviously guess, that the stories uh, endpoint is going to send all of the stories from our uh, data object uh, back to the front end for it to render. Um, and as I kind of sort of already spoiled for you, whoops, um, uh, we can access all of the stories from 
that data object. We can uh, use data.stories. Um, so we can make an endpoint of this format. Um, so we can go over into uh, api.js and we'll do it right below test. We can do router.get because this is a get endpoint. Um, and we want it to go to slash stories. And we can write our function handler. Um, and it just wants all the stories. So we can say our response will just send data dot stories. What did I mess up? Oh, I forgot a comma. Whoopsie me. And, and so it's, it's pretty straightforward for that endpoint at the very least. Um, so now we get to do basically the exact same thing, but for comments. And because this is a workshop, I get to torture you and let it, you do it yourself. Um, so a, a quick little side hint here. Um, if you remember back from W3, uh, when we set up the front end skeleton for this, uh, we, uh, when we were making the request from the front end, sending it to the back end, we passed along a parent parameter. Um, and so because that is being sent here to the back end, we can actually receive and use it now. Um, so the comments endpoint, I will sort of leave to you. Um, so uh, before we, to, to kind of motivate this along, let's think about what the route needs to do. Um, so what do you think the comments endpoint needs to do? Um, it obviously has to send all the comments back. Um, but before we can send all the comments back, um, do you think we have to send all the comments back for every single every single post for each individual post? We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to send only the comments related to a specific post. And so um, you're going to want to use rec.query to figure out which uh, which comments are uh, comments related to a particular story and then filter out the um, ones not related. And so then all you got to do after you've filtered those comments is send them directly back to the front end. So now it's your turn. Um, so I'm going to give a minute or two um, to allow you to make an endpoint. You can pretty much just copy and paste the endpoint I just typed up. I'll throw it on the screen here in just a second. But you can pretty much copy and paste the stories endpoint we just made and make like two or three lines worth of changes. Um, and uh, 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 one hint is that you can use the filter function. I think we talked about first in the intro to JavaScript lecture. Um, and with that, you should be able to make an endpoint that successfully grabs all of the comments and sends them back to the front end. And a quick note, if you wanna test if it works, um, I guess I should have shown this a second ago. Um, but I'll show it right now. Uh, so now we have a stories endpoint here. So if I do npm run start, um, what I can do is I can go back to that other tab over here and I can do stories. And so now I get the, the data.stories. So your goal here is to do the same thing, uh, but for a slash comment endpoint uh, that gets the, the comments 
uh, particularly related to one specific story using rec.query. So I'm going to give a sec. You could look ahead and peek, but that's cheating. Nobody likes a cheater. Um, so um, yeah, I'll just wait a second and you can raise your hand, throw yourself on the query at uh, query, throw yourself on the queue. Um, <laughs> I've been saying buzzwords too much. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully have everybody together. It, has anybody already finished it? All right, cool. Everybody gets to work on it together. Hey Noah, I forgot. What should I have open in my terminal? Uh, you'll probably need at least two tabs going out here forward, but uh, for at least this portion, you'll only need one specific terminal window open that runs npm start when you think you're ready to test it. I'll throw the hints back up. Uh, and uh, it'll look very similar to this lovely thing. Oh, I forgot we even had auxiliary slides here. Yeah, give them like two or three minutes. Feel free to raise your hands.
many of the, about how many of us are done? That is not a beautiful number. For the sake of time, I think I'm going to kind of show the solution real quick. Uh, you'll have another chance to try your hand at some API endpoints here in just a minute. But um, so so um, as as uh, I talked about, um, you'll have to use rec.query. And so to grab the comments that are specifically related to a particular story, uh, we'll have to use the filter function um, and send them back to the front end. So what I am going to do um, is I'm going to have a filtered comments object uh, that filters through the comments within data and grabs all of the ones um, whose parent is the one I'm asking for. Um, so to type that out real quick. Um, so what I can do is I can copy this and then I can make that filtered comments uh, object. Um, and so that will be data.comments.filter. Um, and I'm going to filter each comment based on if uh, the comment.parent 
is now I'm using double equals here because the rec dot query is weird. And even though you might send a number in the front end, it will convert it to a string. Uh, you'll see in just a second. Uh, so um, for uh, life, um, we want to see, uh, we want to get all the comments whose rec dot query dot parent is the same as, um, as the um, one I'm looking for. So now if I, um, so it has updated here. So now if I go on over to localhost and I do comments and we don't exactly, what up? Oh, did I not? Oh. Ta da ha ha. Um, so now that I've done things correctly, whoops. Um, so uh, we can tell which parent is which with the query stuff. Uh, question mark uh, parent, and we're going to try and grab one whose parent is zero. Um, hopefully, I haven't screwed something up. Yay, ta da. So we grab the one singular comment whose parent is zero. And you'll notice if I change it, I get an empty array back because there is no comment currently whose parent is one. Um, and so, yeah, uh, we can test it out. Um, and we can actually test it out using the front end as well. So in a separate terminal tab, uh, we can do hot loader while the start is still running. So we'll have two separate tabs with two separate uh, servers running. Um, so we'll have hopefully some successful compilations. Um, uh, we will not skip forward to other slides. We'll hide those floating meeting controls and we'll do 5,000. And so um, if I add more comments and things to this data object, um, we'll have more comments, more posts uh, as, as this renders. But um, if you try something, um, if you try Hey, I want to make a new story. Um, if we try and do something, you might notice something. Um, so here it says in our console, whenever anything goes wrong, we can always check our lovely console. Um, it says in our console that uh, we have an uncaught error because we've tried to make a post request to API slash story that has failed because obviously we have not yet made this endpoint. So it of course 404s. Um, so let's go and fix that real quick. We've made our get endpoints in this short amount of time. So we can make our post endpoints just as quickly. Um, so yeah, we, we don't like this. Um, so now we can get back on the same page. We can close these. We can do git reset dash dash hard. Uh, we can fetch again and we can check out to step two. And so now that we're all on the same page. Uh, so first of all, um, when uh, something goes wrong if an API route isn't found. I, I'm not satisfied with just the, the generic 404 that it throws in the console for me. I want to go ahead and define a new endpoint that will handle the case of missing endpoints, just as we sort of did uh, for front end related uh, missing routes uh, in, in Faro's server stuff. So 
I'm going to make this endpoint here. Um, and as Mufaro told us, um, uh, the routes go from uh, most to least specific. So of course, this catch all should be thrown at the bottom. So we'll want router.all. So all here refers to all HTTP methods. Um, so it doesn't matter if I send a post request to this unknown endpoint, if I send a get request, a put, delete, or whatever HTTP method uh, you want to come up with. Um, so we're going to accept all methods to all endpoints. Uh, that's what this lovely asterisk will catch for us. And so what do we want to do? Um, we want to give a little more, well, this is not any more information that it pretty much already provided us, but the, this provides a skeleton where we can throw more information if we want more information. Um, so what we're going to do, um, we're going to add a function handler. Um, just as we've done previously. Um, and in this, we're going to use console log and we're going to use this special thing. We're going to say our API route was not found. Um, and the specific um, uh, route that wasn't found, we can grab the method of the request and we can grab the URL of the request that was attempted to be sent to us. Um, I don't know if you've seen this back tick string notation, um, but it is very useful for putting debugging statements like this um, without having a whole bunch of plus string concatenation thrown in the middle. And all of your endpoints, yeah. Uh, they're on the tilde key right below escape. Yeah. Um, so um, all of our uh, API endpoints should send a response. We don't want to ghost our lovely clients. We want to actually send them something. I don't think I've ever used the term ghost in terms of API endpoints. We're, we're making progress today. Um, so uh, to get a little practice, uh, we're going to, instead of sending our, by default, it'll uh, apply 200 status code because nothing particularly broke and um, we're sending a response. So uh, at this point, the server still thinks it's successful, but instead we're going to send back um, a 404 status code first. Um, and then um, now that we've modified the status first, now we can actually send the response out the doorway. You can't exactly modify the status of something you've already sent out the doorway, which is why I'm doing it in this order. Um, so we're going to um, more or less just send out uh, API route not found, um, if I can spell today. Um, and so this is all we have to do for our catch all. Um, so you'll notice if we do um, npm run start, um, part of the reason I've done this is to show how console.log differs uh, on the back end than it does in the front end. So if I do localhost 3000 and I try to do slash, API slash yeet, because yeet is my favorite debugging word. Um, it of course sends us this API route not found that we wanted, but um, if we open up the console here, um, it's just Chrome tells us um, that we got a 404, but this isn't the debugging information that we put. So where did the debugging information that we put go? it goes to the terminal um, that we've had running. So this is the console of your backend servers. It is your terminal. Um, so um, you kind of have two consoles to keep up with. Um, uh, you have to remember whether or not your console printing is happening in the front or backend because that will determine uh, 
whether your statements appear here or in the uh, Chrome or Firefox console. Um, but so now that we have um, our catch all route, um, now we get to worry about another aspect of the um, requests. So we've talked about um, query things with this parent uh, process story ID stuff. But now we get to talk about things uh, sent generally as uh, in our in our body here. Uh, so uh, when the request is actually sent, we will get um, something that says our parent, um, and it will give us the content of a uh, whatever they're requesting to make in a in a post request. Um, so. Uh, yeah, uh, to get things from rec.query is pretty much the exact same thing, um, except rec.query more exists for get request land and rec.body exists for post request land. So as before, I'll start out giving a general template um, with how our post request should be made for stories. Um, so obviously we'll want to uh, make a new uh, make a new uh, post object uh, out of the things that they send us and we'll want to append it to our uh, data stories object so the the items that exist within story um, are as we saw in our data object there are three properties we have to keep track of we want to keep track of the ID, the creator name, and the content that they requested. And so to make this endpoint, um, we're going to throw it above our catch all. Uh, I'm going to group the post endpoints together. Uh, so we'll have an endpoint at slash story. Um, that has our usual uh, function handler. Um, and we're going to define this new story object we want to append. Um, if I could type today, that would be lovely. Um, so the ID, we're just going to increment it. So to get the next highest number, uh, we can uh, use that uh, as the length of that array will be one greater because we're doing zero indexing on IDs here. Um, the creator name, uh, well, we kind of copied that earlier. Um, you can change this to whatever you want it to be because that'll be the name that shows up uh, when you actually make a story here. So we're just going to say it's my name. Uh, we'll worry more about dynamically grabbing names with auth stuff later. And lastly, the content. Um, well, rec is still gray here, so let's um, let's grab something from it. Um, so here we have rec.body.content. Um, uh, so Last, uh, uh, lastly, we need to actually, now that we've made the object, we need to actually put it in our object. So the JavaScript way of doing that is data.stories.push this new story. And then lastly, we can send a response. And technically they just asked us to make something new, um, but Again, we should always respond. Um, so we're just going to respond with the object that we made for them, just to let them know that we actually did do something and we, we succeeded. And so um, now if I go back here and I do start and I do the hot loader um, and I hide this and I go back to localhost 
5,000. And now I am a hacker. Uh, now I can actually make something new. Um, and if we look um, in network and I refresh and I um, um, we will see that um, indeed uh, some requests uh, are getting made every time we uh, make um, a new story and we try and get all the comment for it as it renders. So things are working beautiful in story land. So let's get everything working beautiful in comment land. And just as before, um, it's, it's your turn. Um, so um, we'll have a post request that handles requests to API slash comment. It'll be very similar to the post request for API story. Um, in fact, you can probably just copy and paste it and change a couple little details. Um, I'll give just a few minutes, probably a little less time than I gave last time, uh, as we're cutting it kind of close. Um, but yeah, have fun. Uh, feel free to raise your hand, throw yourself on the queue. Um, I recommend just copying and pasting and seeing what happens. And then when you think you have it working, you should be able to uh, open up localhost 5000 and make a comment and they should all appear.
All right, to, to help with time, we've already like pushed lunches back 15 minutes anyway. So to help with time, we'll go ahead and yeet through this. Um, so as before, it's more or less the exact same thing. So we can pretty much copy the existing one, uh, change every mention of story to comment. Um, the only extra bit is that we have a rec dot body dot parent this time. Um, and we'll want to append this new comment to uh to the comments um and that's pretty much all there was to that one just copy and paste and change a couple things um so now if we i still have both of them running so now if i go over here and i refresh um i can do yeet um, and then I can do yeet or Peter. Um, and uh, now we actually have comments that show up below them instead of random 404s. Uh, but so that's pretty much all there is in the way of coding for this one. Um, but um, you might notice a couple of things. Um, so in the world of backend, we're not quite done just yet. So if you notice when I made changes to uh, api.js there and I refreshed the page, all the comments I had made previously just vanished into thin air. Uh, well, that's because um, when the server reran, um, that data object that I had got reinitialized back to its initial state. Um, so um, it only lasts as long as that server runs. Um, so we're obviously we're going to need a more permanent solution, which we will have later in the intro to databases workshop. Um, and so um, we're going to require you to get MongoDB working. Uh, please make sure that's working before we get into databases. Um, is there anything else I should shout while I have a microphone attached to me? All right, so we're gonna have milestone one signups posted here very shortly. Um, uh, signups due by Friday because we're going to have the actual slots on uh, Saturday and Sunday. All right, have fun. <laughs>